Hi guys, Ranger Elizabeth here. So today we're going to be learning all about plants. And if you look around you, maybe outside of your window or maybe even in your house, you've seen plants before. So today we're going to go over what a plant needs to survive and we're also going to go over the different parts of the plant. After we're done here in the classroom, we'll take a hike on the Valley of the Giants Trail to take all of this stuff and apply it in real life. So as we go through what's on the board today, go ahead and look at those worksheets and we're going to fill out the same information on the board as you have on your worksheet. So the first thing we're going to start on is what does a plant need to survive? So I have some clues on the board here and plants need four things to survive. So the first thing they need is sunlight. And plants will use sun to make their food. So plants don't have mouths like humans and plants don't eat pizza like humans do. So instead, what they do is they use their leaves to capture the sunlight and they'll turn that into energy so those plants can go grow strong. The next thing that a plant needs is water. So if you have a plant in your house and if you've ever forgotten to water it, you know that that plant's probably gonna die. So all plants, no matter what they are, need a little bit of water. And they'll get that water from when rain or dew falls on the soil and the roots of the plant will soak up all of that water and send it to different parts of the plant. The next thing that a plant needs is nutrients. So at home, you might take vitamins to help you stay strong and healthy, but my plant here gets their vitamins from the soil, and we call those nutrients. And these are what help the plant stay healthy. So not only does it get its food from the sun, it also gets food from nutrients in the soil. And the last thing a plant needs is space. So a plant needs space away from other plants in order to grow and spread out so it can capture all the sunlight and gather all of the water and nutrients it needs in order to grow. If you have lots and lots of plants stuck together really close to each other, they're not gonna be able to grow and therefore they won't be able to survive. So plants need a little bit of space to spread out. So let's take a review. All right, let's review here up close. So the four things that a plant needs to survive. Number one, it needs sunlight. Number two, it needs water. Number three, it needs nutrients. And number four, it needs space. All right, now that we know what a plant needs to survive, we're gonna go over all the different parts of the plant that you might see when you're on a hike. So here I've got my flower growing in the ground and it has all of the different parts of a plant that we're going to explore. So the first part we'll look at is the part of the plant that's underground. These here are called the roots. Above the ground, we have lots of different parts of the plant. So you might recognize these here that come off of the plant. These are called the leaves. The main part of the plant that goes all the way from the ground to the very tippy top is the stem. Let's see, we also have something growing off of a leaf in the stem right here. And some plants, after they're pollinated, will grow a fruit. At the very top of the plant, you might recognize this very colorful thing. It's something that we always look for when we're out hiking. This top part here is the flower. And last, once a flower has been pollinated by pollinators, sometimes the plant will make a fruit, but other times the seeds that come from pollination will live in the flower. So in the middle of the flower, we have our seeds.
and seeds are what plants will use in order to make new baby plants. All right, so we're going to review what we just went over. So the part of the plant that's underground here is called the roots. As the plant comes out of the ground, the part that supports the whole plant is the stem. Off of the stem, we have a whole bunch of leaves. Growing off of a leaf, you might find a fruit. And at the very top of the plant, you will find a beautiful flower. And when the flower gets pollinated, sometimes it'll make that fruit. Other times, the seeds will grow in the middle of the flower. All right, so the last thing we're gonna go over is which need each of the parts of the plants are meeting. So our roots here, you might remember when we were talking about the four plant needs. So we'll go over those really quickly. The four things a plant needs to survive are sun, water, nutrients, and space. And all of these will meet one or more of those needs for the plant. So my roots down here, they're in the ground and my roots will be getting water, And they'll also be soaking up nutrients from the soil. So once the water and nutrients have been soaked up into the roots, the stem here, as you can see, it goes from the very bottom of the plant to the very top of the plant. So the stem delivers those, that water and those nutrients from the bottom of the plant all throughout the leaves and the fruit and the flower. So I like to think of it as the road that goes between everything else. So it delivers the water and the nutrients. Over here we have our leaf and you might notice that sometimes on plants the leaves are the biggest part and they'll always point upwards. So the leaves will always be pointing towards the sun because their job is to soak up all of that sunlight and to turn it into energy. So the leaf is what gets the energy from the plant. We also have the fruit. The fruit will hold the seed. Here at the top we have the flower, and the flower is responsible for being pollinated. So in order for a flower to make seeds, it has to be pollinated. And if you ever go on a walk on a sunny spring or summer day, you'll notice that there are lots of bees and butterflies and other insects that like to go inside of the plant move around, pick up some pollen, and then they'll go to the next plant. When the pollinators do this, they're taking pollen from one flower to another to help them make seeds. So that's the job of the flower. And last, once our flower is pollinated, we'll have our seeds. And so if you've ever planted a garden, you might know that you take the seeds of a plant, put them in the ground, bury them with soil, and they'll become a new baby plant. So the seeds are responsible for making baby plants. All right, so we're going to review really quickly. So our roots will get the water and nutrients for our plant. Once the roots pick that up, the stem will deliver the water and nutrients to all the different parts of the plant. The leaves will be pointing upwards to collect sunlight to turn it into energy. The fruit here will hold the seeds that occur after pollination so that new little baby plants can be made. Up top, the flower here is nice and beautiful and waiting to be pollinated by a bee or a butterfly. And once it gets pollinated, it will produce seeds that again will create baby plants so you can have more plants in the future.
All right, now that we're done in the classroom, we're gonna take a virtual hike, but let's go over some trail etiquette. So these are the things you want to do when you're hiking in order to be respectful to yourself, to other people on the trail, and to the nature around you. So on our hike, we are going to stay on the trail. So our trail might look like dirt or it might look like sidewalk, but you wanna make sure that you're always keeping your feet out of the green. Our second rule is that you're going to keep your hands to yourself. So whenever you're out hiking in the forest, it's always a good idea to not touch plants that you do not recognize. In our forest, we have some plants that like to defend themselves or to protect themselves. And by to do that, they will be poisonous. So if you touch them, it might make you itchy. So today we're gonna to keep our hands to ourselves, and we're just gonna use our eyes to make observations. So we just learned a lot about plants and now we're gonna take a virtual hike out in nature to see all of our cool plant facts actually happening in nature. So today we're gonna to be walking on the Valley of the Giants Trail, which is a trail in Beckley Creek Park. And we're gonna take the concepts that we just learned in the classroom to learn a little bit more about these plants in their natural habitat. As I'm walking along the trail, I look off to the side and I notice some wildflowers. Let's take a look at these wildflowers. So obviously, I've got my flower here, a nice pretty white flower. And this is our stem that supports that flower. And it's also got its leaves. Can you remember what the leaves do for the plant? If I continue on the trail, I notice these really, really big plants. And these plants are trees, and they are called sycamore trees. What do you notice about the color of the bark at the bottom and the color of the bark at the top? You'll notice that the bark starts to peel off the tree at the top, and it starts to appear white. Now let's take a closer look at this bark. This bark wraps all the way around the tree and it's hard and it's got different textures. What do you think this tree is using its bark for? Look at this tree here. It's nice and tall, but we can also notice it's got roots that stick out of the ground. If you remember back to what we learned, what do you think these roots are doing? We notice that they're sticking out of the ground. So they live in the ground and the ground around it is moist. So this tells me that the roots are probably stuck in the ground to help that tree get water. But look around the tree and we've got lots of dead leaves and dead plants and all of these things give nutrients to the soil. So the roots to this tree are probably sucking up some vitamins and nutrients from the soil to give this tree food. Check out this tree behind me. This is a huge sycamore tree. And if I go up to it, you can see that even if I extend my arm all the way out, the tree is so much bigger than I am. Sycamore trees are known for being really big and really, really tall because they like to live along a creek. Trees that live along a creek have to be really strong because there's lots of floods that happen. So sycamore trees grow to be really big to make sure that even when there's a flood, they're strong enough to stay standing when the water's moving really fast around them. Because of that, they're also really important for keeping the soil where it is. Their roots hold all of the plants and soil around them together. So if there's a flood, it doesn't destroy the entire landscape. Look what I found. So sometimes when you're out on a hike, you might not see the animals, but we can still look for evidence. This here, those are foot tracks from a deer. So deer are one of the animals that call forests home. You may look around on this trail and say, hey, a lot of those plants don't have any leaves on them. Well, in the winter time, most trees don't have leaves. But as spring is starting, trees will put out buds. This is called a bud. 
and inside of this bud are a whole bunch of baby leaves waiting to emerge. So here, you can see that these baby leaves have started to come out of their pod in preparation for springtime. And I can even come over here to this same tree, but on the different side, where the leaves are getting a little bit more sunlight, and these ones have already started to spread out to get more sun. So this is a buckeye tree, and I know because its leaves come in groups of five and form kind of a star shape. These will get much bigger over time. Look at these three trees. They're all bent in a really funny way. But if you notice, they're bent towards the area where they can face the sky. While it may be cloudy today, on sunny days, the trees will use their leaves to capture that sunlight to make energy. So some trees will bend towards the sunlight so they can get extra energy for their leaves. Have you ever wondered why plants are green? Well, if you remember back to what we learned, plants usually will have green leaves in the spring and summertime. The green in the leaves helps the plant capture the sunlight. And it then will turn that sunlight into energy, like food for the plant, so it can grow big and tall. This is another type of tree that's really common in the parklands. This tree is called an Osage orange tree. And I noticed as I was walking, all of these little holes up and down the bark. And look, we even have some more down here. What sorts of things have, do you think have created these holes in the tree? My guess would be that it was either a woodpecker or maybe some insects that were trying to get inside of the tree for shelter or maybe for a little snack. All right, everyone. So I'm standing in front of one of my favorite trees that we have in the parklands. This is a honey locust tree. And the honey locust tree, as you can see, has these giant spikes that stick out of it. Some of them are even four or five inches long. So why would a tree like the honey locust need these giant spikes in a forest where there's really no threat against this tree, except maybe some floods. Well, the honey locust tree developed these spikes during the ice age to protect from an animal that no longer exists, the woolly mammoth. And it protected itself because the woolly mammoth loved to snack on this tree. And it would even try and destroy the trees in the process of snacking on them. So it developed these huge spikes and the woolly mammoth stopped eating the tree. But soon enough, the ice age ended, the woolly mammoth died, this tree kept on living, but evolution takes so long that this tree still has yet to change. So it's still growing these big old spikes thinking it still needs to protect itself against woolly mammoths. If you think about it, plants are really, really important. Let's see, let's think about it. What do we use plants for? Well, you maybe have eaten a vegetable or some fruit with one of your meals. You might live in a house made of wood and that wood comes from trees like those around me. You could even maybe eat meat, right? So you might eat chicken for dinner, but guess what that chicken had to eat in order to get juicy enough to be on your plate? It had to eat plants. So imagine a world without plants. That world probably wouldn't exist. So to end our hike today, I want you to think of three ways that you need plants in your everyday life. Thanks for joining me on my hike today, guys, and I'm really excited to see you all soon. Bye.